Ciao, mabuhay. You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. Today is the Sunday of the Lord's Passion, the beginning of the Holy Week that culminates in the celebration of the Paschal Triduum. After we commemorate Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem in the opening liturgy, the Gospel would then take us to Jesus' Last Supper with His disciples, His agony, arrest, and trial, His carrying of the cross on which He would be nailed at Golgotha. Seeing all these events leading up to Jesus' last breath, the centurion proclaimed, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Friends, when we look at the crucified Jesus, what do we see? Do we see one who is like us in suffering? Do we see one who is in need of our compassion? Do we see that He is the Son of God who entered our humanity so He could bring us to the fullness of life in God? Let us behold Him who took the blows and was crucified for us. First reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The Word of the Lord. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me, they mock me with parted lips. My God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evil doers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can my bones my god my god why have you abandoned me they divide my garments among them and for my Help, 
my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you, you who fear the Lord. My God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Second reading. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. A disciple stays with Jesus. Stay with Jesus. This is a mark of discipleship. But our question on this uh, Passion Sunday is uh, who would enjoy staying with someone who will be arrested and will be put to death? Will we stay with him? In the first reading from the prophet Isaiah, we hear once again the description of a servant of God who, in the fulfillment of his mission, will suffer. So it is not embracing suffering just because he loves to suffer. No. He will serve God. In fact, he will serve as a prophet, as a spokesperson of God. But one of the consequences is suffering. This servant is a noble person. He says every morning he opens his ears because God opens his ears. He, God prepares his ears, his heart, to listen to God's word. And he stays with God. He opens his ears and whatever he hears from God he absorbs. He does not resist. He does not block his capacity to hear. He is not selective. He stays with the God who has called him and who speaks to him and who will send him so that God's word may be preached to others. This servant stays with God. 
by faithfully staying with God, with God's word, with God's message, what does he get in return? His listeners reject him. They even physically insult and assault him. Now, if you were in, this, in the shoes of, uh, of, of this servant, what would you do? I think part of human instinct is to preserve your own integrity. So you run away, but this servant, no. He stays. He stays. He receives all the insult, all the harm inflicted on him. Why? For him, it doesn't matter that others would abandon him and his message. He trusts in God fully, for God will vindicate him. This servant stays with God. Unfortunately, his listeners don't stay with him, and they even hurt him, harm him, but he stays with God. In the second reading, Jesus is presented to us. In this beautiful hymn, in the letter of Paul to the Philippians, Jesus, who is the Son of God in his divinity, chose to freely empty himself of divine glory. For what? So that he could assume our human state, our human condition. It can be considered a demotion. Yes, it is. But he descends into our human condition in order to remain with us, to stay with us, to be one with us. And for our sake, he even accepted death on the cross. This is how Jesus stayed with us. He even embraced what many of us fear, death, and what all of us do not like, a shameful death. We will not remain with that type of death. But Jesus stayed, stayed with us, stayed with us in our fear so that in the face of death, in the face of the cross, no one will feel alone. But the question is, when he, when Jesus, when it is Jesus' turn to face his cross, will his disciples stay with him? My dear brothers and sisters, the first two readings give us this edifying image of the suffering servant in Isaiah, fulfilled in Jesus. They had the tremendous staying power. They stay with God, faithful to God, faithful to their mission. And they stayed with the people whom they loved, the people whom they served to an extent that is even quite foolish. But they stayed. And we were saved because Jesus stayed with us. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Mark The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, 
for fear that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, 
all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you, teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy! and the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then, the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear, I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately, a cock crowed 
a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him, Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated, place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them, to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The 
the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James and of Joseph, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled the stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. disciples stay with Jesus. We have been reflecting on this uh, Passion or Palm Sunday on the, on the power of staying with God and with neighbors. This is what we see in uh, the figure of the suffering servant in Isaiah in the first reading, who stayed with God, who remained faithful to God, even when his hearers rejected him, did not stay with him and the message that comes from God. But he stayed remaining in trust, trusting hope in God. This is fulfilled in Jesus as presented to us by St. Paul in the second reading. The Jesus who emptied himself of his divine glory in order to be one of us, and he remained with us, even to the point of a shameful death. And he who stayed has been given the name above every other name. In his name we are saved. He remained. He remained. In the Gospel, the passion narrative according to St. Mark. I would like to highlight that aspect. We remember that in St. Mark, Jesus already, I think three times, told the disciples about his shameful and violent death. But it is also always accompanied by a call to discipleship a call to follow him, a call to stay with him. He says a disciple, meaning the one who wants to learn from Jesus or the one who wants to follow Jesus, must deny himself, must take up his cross, and must follow Jesus. Now, if you look at those, they are uh, ways of Staying with Jesus, deny yourself. Jesus denied himself, according to the second reading. So, stay with Jesus in self-denial, in self-emptying. Take up your cross. Well, Jesus will take up his cross. So, stay with Jesus as he takes up his cross. And with him, take up your cross too. And then follow him on the way to Calvary. This is a mark of a disciple, staying with Jesus in self-denial, in carrying the cross, and walking up to Calvary. What do we see in the narrative of the Passion from the optic of discipleship? 
I have, I, I have no time to dwell on all the details, but let me point to some. We have the mystery of Judas Iscariot conniving with the leaders at the time. He will surrender Jesus. And the leaders found in him, you know, uh, an ally. And they took every opportunity now to arrest Jesus. And he is a disciple, huh? Judas Iscariot. Then in the garden, when the heart of Jesus was, was really in anguish, struggling with his mission and yet the prospect of death, his disciples slept. They did not stay with him in prayer and in empathy. Then Judas came with those who were arresting Jesus. They fled. They fled. He was left alone. Then during the trial, many people fabricated lies. They did not stay with the truth about Jesus. And sadly, Peter, who was just outside the trial uh, room, denied that he was in the company of Jesus. He could not stay with Jesus. Thanks be to God there were some women, but according to St. Mark, they looked at what was happening from a distance. But that was consoling enough. They looked, but from a distance. Who stayed? Paradoxically, it was someone who was put in charge as a guard, a centurion. He had to stay close to Jesus because it was his job. He had to fulfill his mission of making sure that this criminal would end up on the hill for crucifixion. He stayed. He heard every word. He saw every movement. And when Jesus breathed his last, the centurion said, this was truly the Son of Man. The power of staying with Jesus. Then you confess who he truly was. My dear brothers and sisters, will we stay with Jesus? Remember, a disciple is someone who stays with him, even on the way to the cross. And hopefully we will see who he truly is by staying with him. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, what do you see in Jesus crucified? Ano ang nakikita mo kay Jesus na nakapaho sa krus? The second point is, why are you tempted to abandon Him? Bakit ka natutukso na iwanan siya? Heavenly Father, you have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people, so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. 
And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed.